We have in the last two weeks also engaged critical stakeholders. We keep talking to our traditional rulers, our various religious leaders, and the organized private sector. We have had several collaborative engagements with all of these various stakeholders and all the, all the conversations around how we stand the tide in Lagos have always been germane at those conversations. We know that we cannot achieve a continuous success without needing to carry all stakeholders along. Let me again especially appreciate our committed health workers and our frontline COVID-19 personnel whose hard work, dedication, and sacrifice have helped us thus far. We are indeed proud of their great service to the state. I'm sure you're all aware that I dedicated our first anniversary in government to the gallantry um, health workers by symbolically decorating representative of each of the various health units on May 29th, which was a gesture that we felt that it was appropriate, it was needed, and it was just to show our own appreciation to all of these frontline health workers. Their negotiations, we have completed an extended first phase and now we're entering a second phase of our easing of the lockdown in line with the Presidential Tax Force and NCDC protocols on ease of lockdown. I'm sure we're all aware that on Monday, June the 1st, the PTF released a set of guidelines to further ease the lockdown. As has been the practice, the PTF allowed the state government to build on the fundamental, on the foundational guidelines issued and to adopt them to existing local context. In the light of this, here are some other guidelines that will be observed and implemented in legal states until further notice. Like has been mentioned, there's a nationwide curfew which will continue to remain in place, um, has been modified from the hours of 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. every day. And that the financial service sector, the banks are now have been allowed to open fully and their working days remain Mondays to Friday. We have now granted offices and private businesses, of course excluding the prohibited ones who we will mention, um, all of our organized private sector and manufacturing concerns will now operate and open from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. in the evening. There is, however, a strategy which we want to ensure that will encourage them to also have to run shifts and other flexible um, working hours within their facility. And one of the things that will happen is if you are running shifts, you also must have guidelines around ensuring that they keep within the premises and have a means of transportation for this staff. As regards the public service, we're asking all of our public officers on grade level 13 and 14 on the unified public service to resume work from Monday, June 8th, 2020. We're still holding backs on grade levels 1 to 12 to further notice. Manufacturing businesses, like I said, are being permitted to operate overnight shifts and provided they ensure that they keep the staff and their premises during this duration and they guarantee transportation and safety for their staff and during this time. There will also now be a restricted opening of religious houses based on compliance um, that we've seen and we've reviewed both with the safety commission. And I will explain what all of that would, would mean very shortly. Hotels and other hospitality businesses are now allowed also to be open. Restaurants outside hotels are permitted to open for takeaway services only. There still shall not be any in-dining activity. Non-essential interstate travel will remain prohibitive. You can still not do cross-state journeys. We have, like we did mention, our portal on the register to open, which has been launched um, by our safety commission. I will be rolling out the, the website very shortly. But our gyms, our nightclubs, spas, cinemas will still remain closed uh, for the next two weeks at the first instance. In two weeks' time, 
we will have reviewed their own protocol again and will tell you when exactly we feel they can open. All of this eased restriction and permitted opening must be accompanied by standard prevention and control measure of typical physical distancing, mandatory temperature checks, and use of face masks in public places, regular disinfection of premises, and strong personal hygiene. In line with my promise that I made two weeks ago, we set up a committee that is chaired by the Honorable Commissioner for Special Duties, uh, where we've drawn guidelines for reopening, and that committee has been working with Lagos State Safety Commission and Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. As we all know, gathering, mass gathering during COVID-19 pa pandemic can be of serious public health consequences, and there are documented evidence that mass gathering can increase the spread of this virus. And that's why we will, from 14 days' time, precisely from the 19th of June for our Muslim worshippers and from the 21st of June for our Christian worshippers, we will be allowing all of our religious bodies to open at a maximum of 40% of their capacity, maximum of 40% of their capacity, and we will be working with them as being expected with the Lagos State Safety Commission. But we know that these places of worship have different sizes. But even if your 40% capacity is really so large, you cannot have beyond 500. And keeping that 40% maximum capacity, it's really, really so, so important. right? And no matter how big your place of worship might be, you cannot have more than 500 worshippers at once. We'll be encouraging people to have more than one service and to ensure that they keep their premises clean, disinfect before another round of worship can take place. We'll also be advising that there should only be mandatory Fridays and Sunday services. All other night vigils and other regular services must be put on hold for now until we review our current situation. We will also be advising very, very strongly that persons below the age of 15, because of how well they walk around and how they become difficult to hold down, that they should be excused from the places of worship, and citizens that are above the age of 65, citizens that are above the age of 65 should not be allowed in into these places of worship. I think these are very, very, very important points that we need to reemphasize. Because of how we see um, the movement of, of, of the pandemic, we believe that that age bracket are extremely very vulnerable and we're pleading with them to please still stay away from the places of worship. Like I said, the crowd capacity should still not be more than 40 at any, 40% at any time. Our safety commission will register, but we will come at unexpected time to check the level of compliance at each of these religious houses. We'll also be in advising that if you don't have face mask, there should not be an entry, you should not be allowed entry into these premises. And like I said, there should be periodic deep cleaning and disinfection of the facilities during and after various times of worship. We we'll also will advise that they should not have any food sharing, communion, where they are being shared by a common dish, should be discouraged during this period. Sharing of kettles during abolition 
also should be avoided, prohibited if possible. Let people know that these are very difficult times. Let's also encourage the use of stationary collection boxes and electronic payments where possible. Um, with this disease from carrying um, collection toll around, let's see if we can keep to a stationary collection point for worshippers when they come around. We also expect to see separate ingress and ingress, which must be properly delineated for free flow of traffic at these various centers during and after the worship period. The decision to proceed, to restrict, to modify, to postpone, or to cancel a worship is strictly at the sole discretion of the state government. Working under the umbrella of the Lagos State Safety Commission and Lagos State Environmental Protection Agency. We we'll still expect for people to have online assessment for their places of worship via the platform that we have provided. I now want to talk about other social and event centers. All of the other social and event centers are currently being reviewed. However, Social clubs with registered trustees with a verifiable governance structure will be permitted to start operation in two weeks' time, meaning that in two weeks we will be allowing social clubs that have verifiable trustees and we can relate and know what are their protocols. They will also be allowed to open in two weeks' time. All others would use the next two weeks to review individual protocols for the other ones. And in two weeks' time, we'll be telling you what the guidelines will be if you do not have an existing trustee membership or you don't have existing protocols in place. For now, the prohibition of opening of social event centers will continue to remain in place. The operators of these centers should use this period to prepare their premises for reopening. And the website which has gone live, um, which I mentioned earlier, is www.lasgsafetyregistration.com. www.lasgsafetyreg.com. And I think everybody can go to that website now and you have all of the other protocols um, as I've enumerated on the ease of register to open. As I promised in my previous speech, these guidelines are required for gradual ease of our economy back into full capacity. In light of this, our agencies will be going around to inspect the various businesses and facilities for their level of preparedness to operate in full compliance with the new directives and guidelines as I've enumerated. I cannot complete this briefing without touching on an important issue that I know is also uppermost in our minds, which is what are we doing with our learning institutions? I know we are all eager to know the plans we have for reopening of our learning institutions. There's still a lot more work that needs to be done in this regard, and we're looking at the educational sector very, very differently. However, we will continue to have online learning with our higher institutional learning, um, which are currently going on. All of our seven higher institutions have started their online learning, and they will continue to explore that um, line of learning. But however, um, primary and secondary schools, um, we will be engaging with the Ministry of Education, with the Lagos State Safety Commission, and we'll be coming out with a, a specific pronouncement, you know, having 
extensive engagement with the various levels of stakeholders in that sector. It's because of the very many stakeholders in that sector that we have not been able to make a full pronouncement. In two weeks' time, we'll be able to make a full pronouncement you know, once the protocols have been agreed with all of the various stakeholders at the primary and secondary school as into when and how these institutions of learning, these schools, will be opening. Regarding face mask, while we have seen very many people adhering to the rule, we we'll still see a lot of people not obeying or ensuring that they wear face mask at public events or even when they are out in the public. We want to reiterate that all of us need to take responsibility. These are very, very difficult times and it's important that we continue to communicate with our citizens that this is for their own good and for their loved ones. Self-regulation is the order of the day and you should not wait for government to regulate you or to regulate your conduct. Even though we'll be doing so, you must ensure as a matter of responsibility that you self-regulate <coughs> yourselves in the interest of your, yourselves and your loved ones. I think it's important now to thank all of our support um, agencies, the security operatives, the police, the DSS, the neighborhood watch, and everyone that has been in partnership with the state and ensuring that we keep the state safe and secure at all times. I would also want to like, to, I would also like to thank our whistleblowers to continue to encourage them that the lines are still working. Let us um, be our brother's keeper. If you notice or if you see that things are going wrong in any organization, please let us um, scale it up and inform us so that we can make relevant amends and we can correct all of these wrongdoings. The numbers are still valid 0901 051 3197 and up to 3199. 0901 051 3197 up to 3199. I want to thank the gentlemen of the press for your patience and for your understanding. Like I keep saying, we are both on the same side of the divide. As you help us push on this communication, we on our own part will ensure that we do everything at ensuring that this pandemic comes to an end in Lagos as quickly as possible. Thank you very much, gentlemen of the press.